Well, hello everyone, and welcome to a new video. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about arrays. Um, we're going to see what is an array, what are the properties of array, how do we use arrays, and what is the benefit of actually using arrays. Now, let's just get into the definition of arrays. An array is basically a collection of data. That's basically and simply what an array is. Array is a collection of data. We usually give them uh, an identifier and we call the collection of data by that identifier. Um, if I want to replace the word collection or the words collection of data with a more fancier word, I'll go, it, array is a data structure. Now, you are in in this field, you want to learn programming, so I am pretty sure you, at a certain point, are going to start learning uh, data structures. Now, most of the data structures that you're going to learn in the future are basically built based on arrays. So that's how important arrays is. And uh, as I said before, it's just basically a collection of data. Now. Why would I need an array? Well, let me just give you an example. Imagine that you have uh, a business and you have um, some, let's say, customers. And each customer, let's say, has uh, a balance or an address or a name. Now, if I have two or three customers, I can create three variables for each customer name and that'll be okay. Five customers are okay. Ten customers are okay. What if I have a thousand of customers? What if I have millions of customers? Does it make sense to create a variable for each customer name to store it, to be able to use it? That doesn't make any sense, of course. So this is why we have arrays. And instead of having all those variable names, basically I can put them all under one uh, unit, and that unit basically is what we call an array. Um, <coughs> So that's basically what array is based, as I said, it's a collection of data. Now, um, well, I'm going to show you a lot of examples or applications of arrays, but before we get into that, let's, uh, let's look at the syntax and how do we create an array. Uh, the idea is very simple. Now, you remember, if I want to create an integer, I will type integer, and then I will type, for example, num. And this is a simple way to create an uh, uh, an integer. Now, if I want to create an array, all I have to do is to open a square bracket and close a square bracket. And in this area, you have to tell me how many elements you want to have in this array. And again, you can go ahead with 5, 10, 11, 12, 1,000. You can put any number you want here. Now, what you should know, this number they're going to type here should be an integer. You cannot put something like this. It has to be an integer, so it has to be something you can count. So I'm going to make a simple, I'm just going to go ahead and create a 10. Um, so this is me creating an array. The array is called num, and the data type of the array is integer, and it has 10 elements. Now what you should know, that you cannot have an array that has multiple different data types. In C++ specifically, ja, uh, array all the elements in the array will be the same data type. Now, this is not the best way, actually, to create an array. It's recommended to come here and create a variable. Um, I'm not going to... Um, let's call it a variable for now. I'm going to fix that later. So if I come here and create an integer, and I will call this one size, and I'll set it to 10, and I come here and replace this with size, of course, uh, C++ will not like this. C++ will say, oh, you're telling me uh, you're using the variable size to indicate the size of the array. Again, this should be okay, but that's not okay because since size is a variable, that basically means the value could change. Now, here's something you should know about arrays that we're talking about right now. This is what we call static array. Static array, basically, you need to specify the size of that array uh, when you write your code. You cannot leave it to be specified later. That's against... Uh, as the opposite of the dynamic array. So this is basically a, size, a static array. So the only way to be able to use a variable here if we actually have it as a constant. If I replace it with a constant, then the error should go. And you can see here it's go. Since it's a constant, I will go ahead and type size, uppercases, and I'll go size, uppercase here. 
So here we go. This is me creating an array of 10 elements. Remember here, in between the square brackets, which basically represent the size of that array, you can put a digit, an integer number, or you can create a constant and start there. Now, this is basically what we mean by an array. Now, I do have an array called num that has 10 elements. Now, the question is, how do I have access to those elements? What if I want to change what I want to give them the values right now they do have values but it's basically a random negative big value so how do we have access to the elements of that array well the idea here is very simple and you have to pay attention to this because this is extremely important since i created the array and i decided that the size is going to be 10 then i will have 10 elements uh, we start counting. We start the counting process in C++ from zero. So we will have an element at zero all the way to nine. This is extremely important to understand. So we have an element at index, what we call index zero, at index one, at index two, three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, all the way to nine. We don't have an element at index 10. Let me show you how is that going to work. For example, I can come here and say num of 0. This is me trying to have access to the value, the first element in this array. And I'll set it to 92. And then num 1. And I'll set it to, you know, let's make it easier. I'll change this to be 5. So in num2, I will put, for example, 75 num at 2, and I'll put 31, then num at 3 equal 11, then num at 4 equal 102. Now, I want you to pay attention here. The size was 5. We start count from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You count all of them together, you get 5 elements. Remember, the, the last element available in your array will be the size minus 1. So if I have a value 5 elements, then the last element will have what we call an index of 4. This is index 0, this is index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4. Index 4 represent the fifth element in this array. Index 0 represents the first element in this array. So this is something you have to pay attention to when it comes to um, assigning values to the arrays. Um, I can ask the user to specify those values, of course, if I want. Just a simple CN, C out, a CN operation, and that will be it. Um, so yes, this is basically how we have access. If I want to show any of them on the screen, I'll just type num and I'll type, for example, 2 and line. Remember here, I'm going to show the third element here. And because I'm showing the third element, I'm using index 2. And the third element, which is going to be 31, if you run project, uh, I should have done that a long time ago. Oh, here we go. And here it is, 31. So if I want to summarize what I just said here, I basically explained what is an array, how do you declare an array, and how do you have access to the elements of the array using those indexes. Um, let's see here, what else do we want to talk about? Square brackets, the index. Okay, now let's... Since we're talking about this topic, I'm just going to show you something here. If I actually passed the limit, let's put here, for example, 51. See here, I declared my array to be five elements, and yet I'm assigning a sixth element here, which is 51. Let's run it and see what's going to happen. And look at that. It worked just fine. But look at this. This is basically what I was waiting for. And this is what we call exception throwing. Uh, there will be a chapter where we're going to talk about, or a video where we're going to be talking about exceptions. But for now, basically when your program is doing something horribly wrong, this is what's going to happen. Your program is going to crush, 
and it's going to tell you that you did a really, really, really bad mistake here. So this is again an error. Do not do it. Avoid it. And again, yet a lot of a lot of you will do that error, especially at the beginning of learning about loops. Now, um, now if you look at this way here, me creating this. Uh, array. I have to go each one of them individually assign a value to that. Is there any way I can get this job done in a simpler or less number of lines of code? Well, there's there's a way to do that, of course. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change this one to be num1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1. And let's create a new one. This time I'm going to use num2 as an identifier for this array. Of course, let's put one here. Let's put two here. Now, what I can do after I create the array, I can initialize it and assign values to the elements. And how do I do that? Basically, after you dec the declaration of the array, type the assignment operator and then open a curly brace and close it. And in this area, just make sure you type the numbers you want them to be assigned to the elements. And the order here is very important, of course. 31, 11, and 102. And this is basically how this line here by itself is equivalent to those uh, six lines all together. So if I come here, let's just copy this and put it here and change this to be two, you'll notice that you'll get the exact same results. 31, 31. Okay. Now, what if I, let's go ahead and create a new array. This time I'm going to call it num3. Num3, same size, of course. Um, sorry. What if I know the first two elements, but I don't know the, the rest of them? So I'm going to come here and type 92, 75. And this is basically something you need to understand. This is a question that you may ask in an interview. You declare the size of the array to be 5, and yet you only initialized or assigned two values to the first two elements. What's going to happen for those three elements? Well, basically all of them, they'll be assigned to 0. So if I come here and copy this, and put it here, this is basically me teaching you the initialization of arrays. Now you'll see that it's going to show me 0 at the last one. And here we go. Okay, so um, can you guess how do I assign all of them to be zero? And this is basically something we recommend you to do every time you create an array. So let's go ahead and put zero here. That's going to initialize the whole array. Oops. Oh, all the whole array to be zero. Let me copy this, put it here, and change this one to be four. And here we go. So this is the syntax of uh, creating the array and uh, initializing the array. And again, now you can now starting from this point, you should have no problems dealing with with data anymore. Every time you're dealing with a situation where you're going to have multiple data, you can put them all under one array and process that array. Now let's imagine I do have an array. And let's imagine this array has 100 values, and I want to show them on the screen, just like I did here with this element. Now, does that mean that I have to type C out, num2, and then the index end line for 100 times? Well, yeah, that could work, but that's not the best way uh, to, to get that job done. Now, here's a phrase that I use a lot, and it works perfectly fine. Loops and arrays are best friends. That's how simple it is. So what does that mean? Let me show you what does that mean. Let's imagine, let's go to num1 again. And if I want to show all the values of num1, so here's what we do. C out num1 of 0. Let's put a space and then semicolon. And let's, I want to put them next to each other, of course. So here's what I'm going to do. And this time there's going to be 1, 
there's going to be two, sorry, there's going to be one, there's going to be two, three, and four. And then after that, C out and line semicolon. Now remember, this is not the best way to do it, but let me just show you the results and you'll notice that I will get actually my numbers printed perfectly fine on the screen. Now, I was just saying here, for loops and arrays are best friends. So how do I take all this away and convert it into a for loop? Well, the idea is very simple. Number one, since I know how many elements I have, so I will go with for loop, integer i equals zero, i is less than size, remember this, and then i plus plus. Now I want you to pay attention to this part. As long as the value of i is less than size, that, that basically means this for loop is going to keep going. So size equal five. So when zero, that's correct. When one is correct, two is correct, three is correct, four is correct. So I'm going to go from zero all the way to four, and that's basically what I need. Remember, I've seen this a lot. Some students will put an equal sign here. That is not how it works. It has to be less than the size because if you put equal here, five is going to be included and you're going to end up uh, exceeding the limit of that array. So um, instead of zero here, just put i, the variable. So you can see here now it's going to change at the beginning that i is going to be zero and then one and two and three and four. Now I want you to remember something. This is very important. When you declare the array, the variable you have here need to be constant or need to be a number. You cannot use variables, but when you try to have access to the elements using the indexes, yeah, that could be a variable with no problems. So let's see how is that going to help. If I run it, I'll get the exact same results. And here you go. Just remember something here. I added a space. So I will have a space between the numbers when they're going to be printed. And then after that, after I'm done with the for loop, I ask the compiler to go to the next line. And this is basically how for loops works. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's really, really easy. It's not that complicated. Um, I can actually, let me just uh, do something different here. Let's take num3 here, for example. Uh, since num3, uh, where is it? 4. Since all the values of 4 are 0, let's ask the user to enter values here. And then I'm going to show it here on the screen. So it's, this is supposed to be 4. And here I'm going to create another for loop. This is how simple it is. And in this area, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go C out. Enter uh, the element value of an, an element, not the, of the array. And then what I can do in this area, I can type this index, let's just put it between parentheses, index equal, and this I put i, and then I'll close the parentheses, and then I'll put a semicolon here. So this is just to format, enter an element value of an of the of an, the array of an array index equals zero. For example, then one and two. Then here I can see in, and I'll type num four of i semicolon. So let's run this and you'll see what's going to happen here. And here we go. Index 0, I'll go with 10. Index 1, I'll go with 20. Index 2, I'll go with 30. Index 4, 3, sorry, I'll go with 40. Index 4, I'll go with 50. And you can see here 10, 20, 30, and 40. Now, just remember, I'm going to say this again. Whatever I'm doing here, it's basically just to demonstrate the concept. In reality, we have arrays that contain millions of values. So you can see here that having a for loop this way will save you a lot of work. And that's uh, how simple it is. Um, we, at a certain point, would need to understand how the array 
physically works inside your memory system. And for that reason, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and open Paint. And I'm going to use my magically drawing skills to explain the array. Now let's go ahead and create an array. Oh, nope, that's way too thin. Integer. Num. Five. And let's say we decided to initialize it with two, five, this way. Now, <clears throat> when you write a statement like this in C++, what's going to happen? Well, the operating system will search the inter uh, search the internet. No, search the memory looking for a space to store this array here. And the space that's going to be found need to be next to each other. So for example, this here could be the area where num is going to be stored. The whole area here. Again, they are next to each other in that memory. So I will have two stored here, five stored here, and zero stored here, zero stored here, and zero stored here. In reality, every single one of those cells or places inside the memory, we call the memory location. Each memory location has a value. Now you don't need to deal with this. We're going to talk about that later in a, in a video. But just imagine, just imagine the value of the first one here was five then the value or the, the address of the next one is going to be 6, and this is going to be 7, this is going to be 8, this is going to be 9, and this is how you have access to those elements by adding 1 <clears throat> every time you move from one element to the other. Now again, we're, there will be a video that we're going to go back to this array. We're going to talk about those memory location and addresses and how do they work. You don't have to worry about that now. I'm just showing you inside the memory what's going on and how the array uh, has its own space uh, there. So let's go back here to uh, Visual Studio. Now, the, the 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 loops that I showed you here, I go with for loops. And usually, when you deal with arrays, we go for loops. We don't use whiles or do whiles. Usually, with the arrays, it's just loops. Now, we do have a very very special loop which is new, and we didn't talk about it when we were talking about loops previous videos. In this for loop, uh, in Java, for example, they call it a smart loop. Uh, in C++, it has a name, but it's not as simple as smart loop. It has a different type, different name. Um, I'll, whenever I remember it, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know about it. But the idea here is very simple, and I'm going to show you the difference between this one and the smart loop. Let's just call it smart loop for now. I'm going to come here and say integer x, and I'll type num4. And then in this area, I'm just going to go ahead and do whatever I did here. It's exactly the same thing here. Copy this. And I'll put it here. But instead of num4, you just put x here. You'll have a space. And then we'll put the end line at the end. Now, let's go ahead and explain what is this new for loop that I just uh, typed here. This smart loop, basically, you will declare a variable here that has data type. The data type here, uh, then... Uh, you have the column here, and then after that you have an array. You must have an array here. Now, the data type of this variable and the data type of the array must match. Or if it doesn't match, you just probably will get some some difficulties. But again, you got integer x and num4, which is an integer as well. Now, what's going to happen with every single iteration and element of num4 is going to be assigned to x. At the first iteration, the first element is going to be assigned to x. At the by iteration, I mean loop. The second loop, the second value is going to be assigned to x. So x here will have all the values of num4 and it's going to be shown on the screen. Now, what's the difference between this loop here and this loop here? Well, in this loop here, we have access to x. So if I decided to come here and say x equal 100, x will be updated but num4 would not get affected by the change. 
that I applied here. Now the difference between uh, this for loop and this for loop, if I come here and say num4 of i equal 100, well, from the name you can tell that num4 is going to be affected by the change that I applied here. So that's the main difference here. If you are, and this is, let me just put it this in, in this phrase, if you're going to have access to the elements of the loop and you're not going to change them, and even if you're going to change them, you don't want to keep the change you're going to apply, then you go with for loop. But if you're going to actually apply some change to those values and you're going to keep the change, then you go with the, the tradition for loop, just like we did here. Initially, num4 all elements was zero and now we try to get them to be changed to whatever the user is going to decide now if i take this one and i copy it and i put it here whatever change whatever the user is going to be apply uh, entering is going to be applied to the x not num4 so that's the difference between uh this for loop and this for loop okay so this is basically and mostly everything related to uh, for loops um, again I'm using integer here as a data type it could be a double it could be float it could be a character it could be a boolean it could be any data type they want and if you created let's say an object you chose to like the one you learned in the previous classes uh, you can have an array of those objects so that's something you have to understand um, uh, it's called a range based for loop that's what this loop is called for uh, range based for loop. Um, let me just go through my notes to make sure that I didn't forget anything. Um, it's always recommended to initialize your array uh, with a default value. If you don't know what are the values that you're going to be using, uh, always pay attention to the values that you're going to uh, indexes. You don't want to uh, get out of the range uh, of the indexes. Like in this case, when I typed 5, that's basically will lead to an error. Um, and just to give you an idea, why is this leading to an error? Here's what's going to happen. You see this value here? This is the first element, second element, third element, fourth element, the fifth element. And when I try to have access to this element, which is the sixth element, the sixth element basically is this one here. Now, this memory location could be used by the operating system to download a movie for example or download a song that you're working at the same time so operating system will not let you have access to other spaces inside your memory that is used by other software and other programs and that's why we got that error that was thrown at us um, let's see here what else uh, declaring syntax we talked about that um, you are not allowed to ask the user to specify what is the size, at least at this point. Remember, this is what we call a static. Static array. Later, we're going to talk about dynamic array. And in dynamic arrays, yes, you can actually ask the user to specify what would be the size. Now, since I didn't talk about dynamic, I don't want to get into the details, but I want you to think about, well, doesn't, dynamic feels it's better than a static if I can specify the size by myself well here's the thing dynamic arrays are a little bit more complicated dynamic arrays require more spaces so if you have a scenario and you know exactly how many elements you need in that array go with a static if the size of the array is something you're not sure about then you go dynamic Um, loops index I think I covered mostly everything related to the syntax of the arrays now um, the second part we're going to talk about uh, arrays and functions and then after that we're going to talk about some applications for arrays and I'm going to use the functions to talk about those applications so that will make it a lot easier so let's start with functions now we had a chapter we talked about arrays and we talked so we talked about functions and how do they work now we're going to talk about the relationship between functions and arrays and how do they actually work together there's a lot of details that you have to pay attention to when it comes to arrays and functions number one when you pass an array to a function what does that exactly mean and 
Am I passing by copy or a reference or it's something else? That's something that you have to th think about. Um, when I'm changing the values of the elements of the array inside the function that I called, will I be keeping the values, the change that I applied to my original array or uh, the original value will be kept without change? That's something you have to think. Can I return an array? That's also something we're going to talk about. So let's just have an example here with an application that will make it a lot easier to understand. Imagine you have an array and let's talk about array number two. And I want you to tell me what is the summation of all these values. When you put them all together, what will be the value? Well, here's how it works. Number one, we're going to create a, a, a function. Since I'm looking for the summation, so it should return an integer. I will call it sum. And in this area, this is the body. Now, what I need to do, I basically need to pass two values here. The first one is going to be the array itself. So integer. And again, remember, you can call it anything you want. I'm going to call it A. And you open a square bracket and you close it without specifying what it is. Now, there's another way to do that, but we're not going to talk about it right now. When we get to the pointer class, we're going to talk uh, a video, we're going to talk about it. And then there's another variable, integer, which is the size. So I do have two arguments that I'm going to pass, the array itself and the size. Now, <clears throat> to calculate the summation of all these values I need to create a variable I will call it my sum for example set it to zero and then after that I will have a four let's go with a four integer x in a and this area since it's uh, let me just write it down and then I'll, I'm gonna explain it I'm just gonna say my sum plus equal x semicolon and then return my sum semicolon now why are you complaining you're missing a semicolon here no I'm not let me save it he doesn't like it okay open a curly brace and close it oh my bad now I, now I know why is he complaining this is supposed to be colon not semicolon Well, he didn't like it. Uh, the range for the amount. Well, here it is. This is A. We just tried it here and it worked. You know what? Let's just go with the tradition for loop. Integer i equals zero. i is less than size and then i plus plus. And this area just type A of i yep now it works um, that one should work but for some reason it's not working i'll try to figure that out later okay so here we go i created a variable i call uh, my sum and initialize it with zero and i'm going through all the elements of uh of a and i'm adding them up to sum so at the beginning let me just show you how it's going to work at the first iteration my sum is going to equal zero plus the first element which is 92 and then after that my sum is going to equal 92 plus the second val value which is 75 and at the third iteration my sum remember here Whatever the results that you get here is going to be used in uh, so you, 0 plus 92, you got 92 plus 75. Now, when you put those together, what do you get here? Let me see. This is 7, this is 6, 1. So, 1, 6, 7 plus the third element, which is 31. And then after that, let's just move to the second. I'm just showing you the iterations here. So, my sum equal this is going to be one nine eight plus the f you know one nine eight is coming from the summation of those two this is the fourth iteration so it's going to be added the fourth element which is 11 
And then after that, the last one, my sum equal. Let's see here. If you add 11 to this, uh, this is going to be 9 here. And this is going to be 2, 0. Okay. Plus the last element, which is 102. 102. And then finally, so this the final sum is going to be returned. My sum is going to equal uh, 3, 1, 1. Okay. So this is the function, basically, and this is how it's going to work. Um, I am going to do the summation and return the summation. Now, if I want to call that function, I can come here and say C out sum, and I pass num2 uh, and line semicolon. Why are you? Oh, so of course, because the size also need to be passed. Okay, let's just give it a try, and then I'll get into the details about what's going on here. Okay, I have to go through this. And here it is. 3, 1, 1. Okay. Let's talk about this function here. Now, remember, I passed the array. Here's the rules that you have to understand. When you pass an array to a function, the array itself, it's going to be, uh, let's, let me show you here. What's going to be passed, basically, is the address of the first element. Now, again, this may not make any sense for you, but that's basically what's going on. Not the element, the address of that element. So when you process anything inside the loop, that affects the original value of the array. So previously, we said when you pass, you can pass by value or pass Basically, when you pass a copy or you can pass by reference. Now, with arrays, you need to understand that passing an array to a function means if I come here and modify a, that basically means two, num two is going to be affected by that. And I'm going to show you that in a, in a sec. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. I am going to say, I'm going to test it. For example, let's come here and let's try to show it on the screen before and after. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put num2 here. So this is before. Let's create a function. I will say change. And I will pass num2 and size as well. And then after that, I'm going to show it on the screen again. Um, of course, I need to have the C out and line here. So I'm going to show you before and after so you understand. Um, how the whole thing works. Of course, he's complaining about change. He doesn't know what is change. So let's go ahead and and create a function. Um, let me just copy this. You know, I, there's no need to copy. I'm just going to come here and type void. It's not returning anything. Remember that change, just like we did here, integer a, and then integer size. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say a. For, let me copy this here. And I'm going to take this one away. And uh, let's take this away. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set them all to equal 100. So all the elements, A0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to the last element is going to equal 100. Let's run it, and you'll see num2 at the beginning will show me those values, and then when I call the function change, whatever change that I applied here will affect the original one. So I'll get them all to be 100 again. And here it is. Okay, so this is something you should know. When you pass an array to a function, if you chose to modify that array, the original array will get affected by that change. Let's put it that way. Now, um, what if I want to pass an element to array and I want to make sure that the, the, the function should not be allowed to do that? So I can come here and type constant. Now, immediately after you type constant, you will get an error here telling you, oh, you just declared A to be a constant. That basically means you cannot change the values. So 
Again, you're the one who created this function, so you should know better that if you want to change it or not. But this is just a message for whoever's going to read your code to tell them, you know that you're receiving an array here. You're not allowed to change it. So I'll just put it that way here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this one away because I want to show you that the change should be applied. But here, I'm not changing the values. I can come here and type constant. And that's basically how arrays work. Of course, since you pass an array and you change the values and the original value is going to be affected by change, you can always have an array to be returned as well, but we don't do that that much. So this is um, an example of uh, a function that will do something, basically give you the summation of an array, and then also it will, uh, it will show you here that you actually, whenever you applied and changed something, the original array will get affected by that change. Um, let's see here if I'm looking at my notes just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Uh, oh, Sorry, I forgot to mention that functions cannot return the array by itself, but it can return something else, which basically, again, when we talk about dynamic arrays and pointers, we'll see how is that possible. Okay, so um, the last part I want to talk about here is another example of a function. One of the basic operations we apply to array is searching an array and we also sort an array I'm not going to talk about sorting we're going to have a video for that later but let's do a search how do we search for an element inside an array well the idea is very simple um, let's imagine well since I modified array 2 here let's go back to array um, 1 which we didn't change that much so let's say you want to search for an element, let's say 31, inside that inside that num1. Now, when you search for an element, you are expected the program or the function to tell you where is 31 located inside that array. It's not going to tell you, yeah, 31 does exist. No, I want to know where it is. So by that, I basically means I want to know what is the index uh, where the 31 is stored at. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to come at the bottom and I'll say integer search. Uh, let's call it index. And I will say index equals search. I'm going to pass num1. I'm going to pass size. And I'm going to pass 31, which is basically the value that I'm looking for. Now, of course, he doesn't know what is search, so that's basically where I have to come here and type. So I'm going to start with integer, search, and then another integer, a, that's an integer size, and then integer val, the file that I'm looking for. Okay, the idea here is very simple. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start by typing index equal negative 1. Why negative 1? I'll explain that in a sec. And this is what I do. I'll say 4. Well, you know what? Since I'm here, let's just copy this. And let's open up curly brace and close it. Now, I do have for loop here. And what I'm going to do in this for loop, I'm going to say if uh, a of i double equal val you come here in this value and you type this index equal i i updated the value of index to equal whatever i equal and then break get yourself outside of this loop and then at the bottom return index ind so what's going on here in this area here well at the beginning i decided that i will create a variable i call it index that should return to tell me what is the location of the value i'm looking for and uh, assign it to negative 1. Let me just copy the array and put it at the top. Even though I'm copying num2, but I know num1 and num2 are exactly the same. So I'll just put it here. 
Remember, val here is 31. That's what I'm looking for. So what's going to happen here in this for loop, I'm going to start with a value of index 0, so 92 value, and I'm comparing with 31. If they match, then basically this is going to be true. If they don't match, go to the next value, which is 75. And then at the 75, they match, do this. Otherwise, go to the next value. And here's the next value where they match, 31. Now look at 31. Since 31, the val equals 31, the element, then this condition will be true. And then I'm going to update index to equal i, which equal basically 2 at that case. After that, I updated index to equal 2. And I said break, leave the for loop, and return to. So back here at the function, this index will equal 2, and that will represent the location of 31. Now the question is, what if I'm looking for the value 311? Well, here's what's going to happen. You will never find a match with those values. And since there's no match, the index value here, the IND, will never be updated or changed. So by the time I get to this point here, the original value of index, which is negative 1, will still stay is still stay the same, which is negative 1. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to use index 0 as an indication that the value wasn't found. So what I do here, I come here and say if index equal equal negative 1, see out value wasn't found. Backslash n semicolon. Else, see out value was found at index, and I put index and line semicolon. So I'm going to give this a try with 31 and then 311. Again. Okay, here we go. Value was found at index 2. Let's change this one to be 11, 311. And again, value was not found. And here we go. This is an example of how uh, uh, functions and, 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 and arrays works. Now, it makes a lot of sense if I come here and type constant here. Again, remember, this is just to tell whoever, you, for example, someone will come after you and will say, oh, let's, let's work and play with this function and try to change it. By typing constant here, you're basically telling him, whatever you want to do here, don't think about changing the array values. You're not allowed to do that. Okay, so this will be the end of this fun, uh, video. Um, what I want to say here, arrays are extremely important, not only if you're learning C++ for the purpose of learning C++, or this is basically the your first class in, in programming, and then later you're going to learn a lot more stuff. Arrays is something you will see a lot in your career if you chose programming to be your career.